How's it going everybody? This is Craig Peters here from Sound Iron and on today's video we're going to be talking about building a PC for music production. In today's modern age of computer technology it's never been easier to write, record, and release your own music. So over the years of playing in bands and touring and doing all that stuff I always loved being in the studio and always hoped that one day I'd have my own home studio so I could just write whenever I want, compose, and just get a little bit more into the technical process of recording your own music. So when looking for computers, I wasn't necessarily sure what I should get. I had a few friends who were recommending, oh, you should get a Mac, or oh, you should you know, build your own PC. But the idea of building a PC was a little bit, uh, a little bit scary to me because I wasn't too sure exactly what I should buy or how to build it. I've had friends who built computers in the past, but to me, it wasn't really a part of the process that I wanted to get into. So I ended up just getting a Mac. I got an iMac, I got a Focusrite 2i2, and a copy of Logic. And of course you start to add little things to your studio over time like plugins and mics and acoustic treatment and that sort of thing. So luckily with the help of the Sound Iron team they were able to help steer me in the direction I needed to go as far as what parts I needed, uh, how to put it together, and just basically the whole process. So the video card stuff that we're going to be talking about, it's not necessarily for music production, but if you are interested in doing any kind of video we'll be talking about that later as well. Now as a note, this is not a Mac versus PC video because I've used Mac for years, it served me well, but the idea of being able to customize and upgrade over time, it's just, it, there's certain things about it that has its advantages. Uh, when it comes to Mac, of course, it's, it's easy because everything's just there. So PC, it takes a little bit more work, but I think, like I said, it has its advantages. So whether you're an aspiring composer, audio professional, or just want to start writing your own music from home, these are some things you're going to want to keep in mind when picking the parts out for building a PC. Having a powerful CPU is definitely ideal when it comes to audio processing and overall performance. Especially when you start using a lot of plugins, it can really start to tax it really quickly. So having something that's powerful enough is definitely important and something you want to keep in mind. Because of this, we opted for the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 2950X. It's got 16 cores with an operating frequency of around 3.5 gigahertz. My last computer was a quad core, so since having a 16 core, 32 thread CPU, I can definitely tell you there's been a huge increase in overall performance. All right, so now let's talk about RAM. So RAM is your random access memory. It's basically when you load up any programs or any software, you know, they all use RAM. Plugins use RAM, uh, everything. So having a lot of RAM is definitely important, especially if you're trying to go, you know, the route of having a big VE Pro template with uh, a bunch of your favorite instruments loaded up and ready to go. If you have something maybe you're like around 32 gigs and you're loading in just like tons and tons of sample libraries, you're gonna need a lot of RAM because you'll just it'll just start to glitch out on you and that's not fun. So for this very reason I ended up getting 128 gigs of G-Skill Trident's RGB RAM. Uh, just having that freedom and headroom to be able to load whatever you want is really appealing. Um, it's definitely, you don't need 120 gigs of RAM. It can be slightly overkill depending on what you actually do. Uh, I just, I like the idea of not having limitations. Being creative and then having your computer just start to just max out on you, it's just, it, it, it can really kill your creative vibe. So I definitely wanted to have the headroom since now I have a computer that I can just load in as much as I want. So it's definitely helpful and it's definitely made uh, working in bigger templates a lot easier. All right, so next we're gonna be talking about disk storage and hard drives. Uh, I used to have all of my samples loading off of an external hard drive and it's just way slower. It just, it, it, it's not as fast as it, how it would be on an SSD. So I would definitely recommend if you're doing anything with having your samples live somewhere, Definitely an SSD is the fastest way to go. It just streams so much quicker and it's a really big difference, especially if you have templates where you purge all of your samples and you wanna be able to stream it in just right away. It definitely helps having them on SSDs. So for this, I got the Samsung 970 Evo one terabyte SSD drive for all the installing of my general software apps and the Samsung 860 Evo two terabyte SSD drive that all my samples live on. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the parts that we picked for this build. So for the graphics card, I got the Sapphire 11275-03-40G Radeon Nitro Plus RX Vega 64. So for any of you out there that do a lot of video or working with 4K footage, you definitely want a powerful graphics card because it just makes playback so much smoother and it's, it's been really nice having this. And then I got the Corsair AX850 850 watt power supply a Noctua NH-U12S CPU cooler for AMD, 
And then I got the ASRock X399 Phantom Gaming 6 motherboard, and finally a Corsair Obsidian 750D full tower case. So what you're watching now is some time lapse of the building process. Nathan Bowler was kind enough to come by my studio to help me with assembling all of the parts. There are some things you definitely want to keep in mind when building a PC. The most important is when installing the CPU into the motherboard, and this is often the most scary part if you've never done it before. You want to make sure to follow the instructions to see the proper method for installing this. When taking the motherboard out of the box, it's good to set it on the box that it came with and not placing it on a hard floor. This motherboard came with some styrofoam around it, so that helped. It's important that you apply enough thermal paste so that you cover all of the dies of your CPU and tightening it enough to get a solid connection as you want to keep it cooled so it does not overheat. After that, we installed the Noctua cooler and connected the fan. Connect the fan so that it flows through the heat sink in the direction that is designed for your tower case. For the Corsair 750D, the airflow is from front to back, so I connected the fan to push the air through the heatsink and get sucked out from the rear fans. Installing the RAM is super easy, as you just pop it into the motherboard. Sometimes if you only use four sticks of RAM, check to see that your motherboard has a preferred layout that works best. Once that is all done, we mounted the power supply and the motherboard to the inside of the case. Following that, we installed the graphics card. If it starts to get a little bit crowded on the inside, you can also remove the hard drive slots to have a little bit more room to work. Then we installed the SSD drives and a 10 terabyte drive for storing files and connecting all of the wires. We really aimed for cable management and we were really careful as far as how we routed everything. And this makes everything really easy for the next time you open up your case to do any later upgrades and it just looks nicer. Since I was switching from Mac to PC, I needed a new monitor and decided to get an Acer 49 inch super ultra wide. Now, while it can be a little bit overkill, I found it to be a much cleaner layout without the bezel in the middle of the screen. Of course, these are just the parts that we picked. It's not the end all be all when it comes to building a PC. Uh, this is just to give you an overall guideline of things you're gonna need like coolers and you know fans and certain graphics cards. You know, Use this as a guideline to sort of help steer you in the right direction of, of things to look out for and things that you're gonna need. So for any of you out there who've built your own PC, whether it's for music production or video or anything, drop them in the comments and let other people know what you're using. And if any of you have questions, leave them in the comments as well. Let's try to turn this into a really cool resource for people who are maybe interested in the idea of building a PC for music production. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like as well as subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you found this helpful and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.